So, have you already made plans for your summer vacation? Well, apparently, there's an ever so slight chance that you won't be able to live them out. Wild rumors on the internet and elsewhere have it that the world might cease to exist at literally any moment, and the Yellowstone supervolcano may be to blame. Oh boy, sure sounds scary, but hey, let's check the facts first. Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming, USA is America's very first national park. You might also know that Yellowstone sits on top of a giant supervolcano. That's part of the reason the park can boast its amazing geysers and hot springs. But at the same time, underneath Yellowstone, there's an enormous chamber full of hot liquid rock called magma. In 2015, researchers from the University of Utah found that this chamber is much bigger than previously thought. They found one more reservoir with magma under the top one. The more spacious the chambers are, the more magma they contain. Together, the two reservoirs contain a glob of magma which is 44 miles wide, 30 miles long, and 12 miles deep. In fact, all this magma could easily fill the Grand Canyon not once, but 11 times. Now, some people are worried that the magma chambers are pushing against the ground above them. This causes the land to rise approximately 3 inches a year. According to scientific estimates, the level of the ground over the volcano increased by about one foot between 2004 and 2011. So doesn't that mean something isn't going as it's supposed to? Well, don't start shouting doomsday just yet. The Yellowstone Volcano Observatory states that this process either stopped or seriously slowed down in 2015. And since then, Nothing too exciting has been going on with a volcano. Besides, experts say that the ground rising and falling is how the Yellowstone supervolcano breathes. It just moves up and down without erupting. Also, Yellowstone does have the status of an active volcano, and its volcanic explosivity index is 8 out of 10. It's a high number for sure, but it doesn't mean that if this volcano erupts, it'll be an apocalyptic event. And while they say that more than 1,000 bison have recently left the park, Yellowstone management doesn't connect this fact with any potential danger. Hey, maybe the grass is greener elsewhere. Let's also not forget that Yellowstone's last major volcanic eruption was nearly 700,000 years ago, long before humankind appeared. But just for curiosity's sake, let's have a look at what would happen if the Yellowstone supervolcano erupts. Would it be the end of the world or a more localized natural disaster? Well, here's the worst case scenario. Right before the eruption, the ground around the national park would lift. Geothermal pools and geysers would heat up to superheated temperatures, well above its current 205 degrees Fahrenheit. In addition, they'd get even more acidic than usual. Magma would start to rise to the surface. In one moment, the roof rock of the magna chambers wouldn't be able to resist anymore and the eruption would kick off. A massive column of lava and ash could explode upward to a height of over 16 miles. After that, it'd keep pumping ash for days on end. Such a mixture of lava, ash, and gas would be hotter than 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. Moreover, it would move at the speed of around 300 miles per hour. The air near the center of the eruption would heat up to nearly 600 degrees. Yet the most treacherous consequence of the supervolcano eruption would be the ash fallout. Be sure to get your umbrellas out and put on your gas masks. If you inhaled this substance, it would turn into a glassy cement in your lungs in a matter of seconds. You can probably imagine how bad the outcome could be. And since ash is a dense substance, buildings would eventually start to collapse under its weight. It would take just days until a 10-foot layer of ash covered an area of about 50 miles around the center of the eruption. Salt Lake City and the neighboring areas would receive 3.5 feet of ash. A thin layer of ash would also blanket Los Angeles, San Francisco, Chicago, and even farther cities like New York, Miami, and Toronto. The ash would make water unsafe to drink. 
vehicles would break down. For some time, there would be no flights to or from North America. And for once, no long lines at airport TSA security. Once the ash reached the stratosphere, temperatures in parts of the world would drop, especially if the eruption were very rich in sulfur. Since this substance is effectively a sun blocker, temperatures would drop so low that there would be no summer in some parts of the world for the next several years. The monsoon seasons would change. Agriculture would have serious problems, which would create disruptions in food supplies. The Federal Emergency Management Agency FEMA, has estimated that the potential damage would be about $3 trillion in the U.S. alone. But hey, take a breath! This is the worst-case scenario, and, according to the scientists from the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, it's very unlikely to happen. They're sure that, based on their research and observations, if an eruption did occur, it wouldn't be very explosive. Its most probable outcome would just be your typical lava flow. There have already been three super-eruptions in the history of Yellowstone. But they happened 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, and 640,000 years ago. The latest one got the name the Lava Creek Eruption. It created the Yellowstone Caldera and ejected a staggering 240 cubic miles of rock, dust, and volcanic ash into the sky. Well, that sounds pretty impressive, even though there haven't been any major volcanic eruptions at Yellowstone since. Anyway, even if a super eruption was imminent, scientists may have found the solution that would help humankind get out of danger. NASA researchers have suggested a seemingly logical plan to just cool down the Yellowstone supervolcano. The thinking behind this is that the volcano leaks out only 70% of the heat from its magma-filled chambers. The rest of the heat stays inside. As soon as the heat reaches a particular threshold, the volcano will erupt. That's why, if it was possible to extract even 35% of the heat from the Yellowstone volcano, the eruption could be avoided. Magma gets thicker and stickier when it's in a cooler state. Once it loses this fluidity, it'll stop trying to get out to the surface. One of the ways to cool down the supervolcano would be to add more water to its insides. Unfortunately, that's next to impossible. First of all, it's incredibly expensive and difficult to build an aqueduct in the mountainous area. It would also lead to huge water expenditures. Then NASA scientists came up with a different plan. They suggested drilling a 6-mile deep well and pumping down cold pressurized water. The temperature of the water that would return would be approximately 600 degrees Fahrenheit. This way, the heat would gradually be extracted from the volcano. And if a geothermal plant were built on the site, it would be able to generate electric power. Thanks to the simplicity of its production, this electric power would have an amazing price of 10 cents per kilowatt hour. Unfortunately, this plan has a number of drawbacks. First, the deepest drill hole on the planet is currently about 40,000 feet deep. That sounds deep enough, but this borehole is only 9 inches in diameter. As you can imagine, for thousands of cubic miles of magma, that's nothing more than a pinprick. There also exists a risk of triggering the eruption. If people accidentally drilled into the magma chamber and tried to cool the volcano from there, this could make the top of the chamber much more fragile. As a result, it would become more prone to breakage. On top of that, it could cause the release of the toxic gases that accumulate at the top of the reservoir. This danger might be avoided if specialists started to drill the lower side of the supervolcano, for example, somewhere on the outskirts of Yellowstone National Park. In this way, the heat wouldn't be able to reach the top chamber. This approach sounds really good until you learn one little detail. The duration of such a drilling project would take thousands of years, as in 16,000 years. The problem is that by using this method, you can't cool the volcano faster than a rate of 3 feet a year. On top of that, scientists aren't 100% sure that the volcano will stay cold for at least 100 years after they finish the project. And last but not least, the job of cooling down the Yellowstone supervolcano would cost $3.5 billion. That's a big prize for such a controversial project. In any case, 
scientists believe that people don't have to worry about a super-eruption for another hundred years, or even longer. According to the United States Geological Survey, the yearly probability of a massive eruption is 1 in 700,000. This probability is nearly the same as that of a big asteroid crashing into Earth. Another fun fact to consider. What's more, there's no scientifically proved evidence that any of these events are likely to happen anytime soon, if ever. And I'm very happy about that, aren't you? Do you believe that the Yellowstone supervolcano will erupt in the near future? Share your opinion in the comment section below. Remember to give this video a like, let your friends know everything about Yellowstone supervolcano, and hit the subscription button to move to the bright side of life.